Larry Walker grew up on ranches in northern New Mexico, served in the U.S. Navy, and then obtained a degree in range management from New Mexico State University before going to work for the BLM in Oregon. There, beginning in the early 1970s, Walker served as a range conservationist on the Medford and Prineville districts before transferring to the Oregon State Office in Portland. Shortly after his retirement from the BLM in early 1997, he established the Range Biome and RangeNet websites with associated listservs. When I spoke with Larry in August 2003, I asked him about his reasons for providing these internet resources. When a person uh, starts reaching the end of a career, I, th I think it's natural to uh, look back and kind of assess where you've been, where you're going, where things could go be going, what's right and what's wrong, and a few things like that. And uh, while I felt that we'd made some progress in some areas, it was painfully slow and I felt inadequate. And uh, looking towards retired life and uh, what may or may not have been my contribution to the greater good of things, I thought a little bit about what was the single thing, based on my experience, that could be done on BLM lands that would bring about the greatest improvement of the ecosystems, watersheds, uh, wildlife, and all of those things. And it was to get rid of the adverse impacts of grazing. It, it, pure and simple, uh, essentially all of it is grazed, and uh, grazing is the is uh, one of the most severe impacts uh, out there. So I uh, planned when I retired uh, to get active in in the environmental community to work towards that. Well, when I retired, I found out that getting active in the environmental community is not all that easy, uh, particularly if you come from a questionable background, like being a BLM range conservationist. <laughs> so anyway, I pulled together this portfolio of uh, a few things that I had done uh, with uh, uh, some color reproduction and in a loose leaf binder, and I made up, uh, I don't know, eight or ten sets of it, which for one thing was getting kind of expensive, and I started trying to find uh, folks in the environmental community to get one to get a copy to, and uh, some responded, others didn't, and uh, about that time I also started feeling a little bit of a withdrawal. When, when you're working within an agency like that, you, you don't know until it's gone how much information is being fed to you through your, through your inbox and the various things that are going on. So I went ahead and did what I had planned not to do, which was to get onto the internet. And about that time, the uh, cost of uh, websites had come down to about $20 a month. And uh, with a little bit of exploring, I decided, well now, most of this stuff I've been manually putting together into a portfolio, I could put onto a web page, save myself a whole lot of money, uh, save a whole lot of trees, and uh, maybe get some other people to look at. So I brought up, brought up that uh, the Range Biome website where I initially just put some of my own stuff in there. Uh, then I started thinking, well, there are some other retired uh, range folks around. Uh, maybe we could set up a, sort of a listserv or something and uh, talk with each other. Well, generally, by the time that a range con uh, has retired from BLM or from the Forest Service, if they are of the persuasion that uh, maybe things weren't done so good and there might be some improvement needed, by the time they retire they're burned out and so the last thing that they want to uh, communicate about is range. So by and by I uh, met folks through the internet through going to this meeting or that meeting and so I expanded that thought a little bit and said well now if I can't do with this with retired folks how about just doing it with folks who are interested in the management of uh, federal public lands. Because at that time, there was no group that was really focused 
specifically and primarily on that. So uh, I, I started uh, RangeNet and started uh, recruiting members uh, using the old National Geographic approach of uh, n nomination and invitation and acceptance type of thing. And uh, from there we grew to where we've got oh, a couple of hundred members. Uh, uh, a lot of them uh, uh, contribute uh, information, data, opinions and other things that we post on the RangeNet website which uh, is uh, getting substantial now. It's uh, something over 250 megabytes of storage and uh, we get about uh, something over 10,000 unique visitors a month to it from the net. Uh, that's, that's not fantastic from internet standards but it's, it's still substantial uh, and it's been growing. Uh, along the way, uh, after RangeNet had been going a couple of years, there were a lot of people on there that I'd never met, and I was sure there were others who had not met others, and uh, so I tossed out the idea, hey, why don't we get together someplace? And I suggested Reno, since I happen to like casinos. And there was enough interest that uh, to do it, but along with that interest, I also started uh, reading between the lines assumptions that, that hey this was going to be a more general meeting. So uh, I expanded it and we had the first uh, RangeNet meeting, RangeNet 2000, uh, in November of uh, 2000 in Reno, Nevada. And as an outgrowth of that we have had uh, annual RangeNet meetings ever since. 